the as yet unanswered questions. What have we gotten ourselves into? Are we ready for this? Can we do this? What have we forgotten? What have we left behind? Oh man. What have we gotten ourselves into? Art and adventure. For photographers who are into the outdoors, the two are completely intertwined. But one is very definitely the result of the other. The art is always a reaction or response to the adventure itself and the incredible things that we get to see, feel and experience along the way. The reality of our arrival is serious baptism. No thoughts of, nor time for creativity here, just survival. itself, raw and brutal. It's exciting, nerve-wracking, a little frightening. But this is what adventure is all about. The unknown, the risks and the rewards. The exhilaration and relief of attaining our immediate goal and shelter. The storm rages on outside, in all its fury. But we, now warm and dry, have the time to contemplate and reflect on what we've just been through. Lucky to get here today. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Three kilometer pedal from hell. <laughs> Into the wind you've been hearing. First storm passes. The beauty of the place begins revealing itself. We start developing an appreciation of our surroundings. This is the beginning of understanding and connection. gives you a different perspective. Being at water level, there's an immediacy and intimacy with the place as you start to become a part of it, discovering the wonders and unique aspects of the place. The textures, the views, the very nature of the place. wind adds such attention to the way you're feeling. Experiencing the power and impact of the elements on the flora and fauna around us and also on ourselves, leaving us raw and on edge. The physical toil of the kayaking and hiking puts you in a different place mentally. The exertions and the interaction physically with the place alters how you see it, feel it and thus interpret it. You begin to get lost in the feeling of the place. You are now part of its ecosystem, if only as an insignificant but tolerated visitor. You 
you adapt to it. It embraces you in a way. First little taste of the outer coast of the island. A different feeling. Almost feels like a tropical paradise. It's golden sands, turquoise waters. At least until the next wave of rain arrives. Foraging for food on the way home. Taking a few mussels off the rocks. Taking enjoyment and sustenance from the place that you're part of. It's pretty special and rewarding. Damn, it tastes good. The dawning perfection. A place revealed at its absolute best. After all that we've already witnessed, this calm and clear respite feels rare. You feel more honoured to be there and able to enjoy it. To see just how beautiful it can be. Remote, unspoiled, a real treasure, as though accepting and rewarding us. Us, a tiny speck in the immensity of wonder. The immense privilege of being in a place such as this, it feels both hard fought and hard won. This is what we came for. So we've got about as far up Cook and Lear as we can go. It's about five kilometers. The plan here is to climb Gog or Magog or both of them. Who knows? See how the bush goes. Oh. Hiking, much like the kayaking, is a physical interaction with the environment. Taking in the kilometers step by step, view subtly changing with each advancing step, the enjoyment of that journey and its toil, all adding to the experience and the sense of place. Natural sculptures revealed and to be reveled in, the wonders of nature to sculpt and form, a tribute to the power and wildness of nature in this place. A bit like us at this point, beaten down, brutalised, shaped by the experience of its elements. Reaching or attaining a peak or high point, a goal achieved, how rewarding that feels. From such heights, the perspective you get of the place is completely different. An overview, literally. The context of the place and your position within it a sense of scale. Lunch spots don't get much better than this. Time to get the coffee on. Having the time to simply enjoy after the toil gives you the space to truly start to see a place and what it offers you in a photographic sense. Just these spectacular rock formations up here. Camera in hand, you respond to whatever the present environment offers you in terms of light, shape, shadows, compositions, views and vistas. You begin to try and capture and document what is unique to that place and the feelings that it brings up inside of you that you are then reacting to the experience and the place. The relaxing enjoyment of the evening after the earlier toils. Beautiful calm. A relaxed calm. Such a fulfilling day. You don't want it to end. The colours and textures of the golden hour warming the soul.
Every evening in this place is just so unique and different. Beautiful peaks of Gog and Magog. This beautiful land of mud and rainbows, and wind and water. So much water. Interactions with the local wildlife are spiritually rewarding, hugely uplifting. An intimate interaction with a wild creature is similarly fulfilling to the visceral interaction with the place itself. Trying to capture the beauty of the place amidst the fury of that wind is really unsettling. Just completely puts you on edge. It's hard to even stand still. Bits of egg, bits of tomato, bits of potato, bits of unrecognisable beef. And then, before we were ready for it, the journey was almost at an end. Just one last night. We had no idea what we were in for, but we put ourselves out there in the box seat, almost on a whim. desire to get out for just one more walk, just to see that last sunset in this incredible place. And so we find ourselves in the prime place to watch the dramas unfold, in the theatre of the Gogs. What sort of a show will she put on for us tonight? The unknown expectations, the excitement, the realistic fact that it may not happen at all. It could, like many nights, simply be a slow, uninteresting fade to grey. But it doesn't feel like that's how it'll be this night. The feeling is somehow electric. We get the sense that we're in for something rather special. See it. Feel it. React to it.
Sometimes the conditions simply overtake you. It gets too fierce. You want to persevere, but the risks become too high. You'll damage gear, or yourself, so you have to withdraw from the moment. You have to pause and wait for the weather to pass. It gives you the chance to regroup, gather your scattered thoughts, refocus and be ready to go again as soon as the conditions allow for it. Do you wait for the moment, or do you chase the moment? The moments happen so quickly, sometimes they're infuriatingly fleeting, gone before they even really begin, or before you have the time to respond. It all happens so quickly and so intensely, the wonders are happening all around you. You have to be looking every which way and everywhere. There's a huge fear of what you might be missing. There might be something happening behind you. Changing by the minute, and then changing again. It builds and explodes into the most unbelievable sight. How can this possibly be? The awe, the amazement, the wonder of it all. Your emotions are roaring inside you. This is it. One of the most incredible things you've ever witnessed. The realisation of its incredibleness starts to sink in, but you don't have time to dwell on that notion. It's quite simply going nuts, and you need to react and try and capture it. You know you'll never see anything quite like this ever again, so you have an immense responsibility to yourself to try and capture and record that moment, everything about it, how all your senses are reacting to it, so that you can hold on to that feeling forever. And that's ultimately the true test of whether you nailed the shot or not. And if you got it, that's the reward. That's what it's all about. It's an intensely personal moment, the capture, the photograph, and the memory. Eventually, sadly, the show is over. Night begins to draw near. The rush, the elation, and the adrenaline begin to subside. But there's always one more shot to be had. One more thing to see and delight in. Before the long, cold walk home in the dark.